So it's really fun channeling Jesus. It's very different from the librarians because they're like a collective that experience emotions vicariously. They're just very, very compassionate. And, but, you know, like, like when you see a little kid crying because someone called them, you know, a pebble and you're like, you don't need to cry over that. And you like cheer them up, but you don't have an emotional response except, you know, love and compassion. And that's kind of where they're at. Everything we do that we're so traumatized, they're like, oh, and they're like love, compassion, education, professor, 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 collective. And then Jesus comes in and he really, I mean, just imagine he goes in front of an audience and he doesn't know any of them. And some of them are there to be troublemakers. Others are there because a friend dragged them. Some of them are his like devout followers. Others are like, I don't know who this guy is. And he's talking about, you know, we can all be one, you know, you can connect directly. And they're like, yeah, whatever. Where he's like, okay, look at this. You know, here's some water. Ta -da! It's wine. <laughs> Enough wine for everyone. And they're like, oh. Oh, okay. So tell us more. And he's like, and you can do this and you can do this and you can do this. Everyone can do this. You don't need me to do it. Anytime you want wine, you can get wine. Just connect directly to God. Like, you know, he was like a showman in a way, but not like a fake showman, just like a very passionate person who could get anyone to say, oh my God, I need to learn from you. I need to do what you're doing. If you're telling me I can do this, I want to do this. Show me how. You know, so he's very passionate, very persuasive, personable. Uh, he puts out a big aura, big. And it's like powerful. Like the, the library is just like glowing. Jesus is like, you know, and and he, um, he has an especial love for anyone who's like innocent, you know, like children, young people, you know, people who are injured or ill or anyone who needs a helping hand or some, you know, guidance. He has no patience, no tolerance for like hypocrites or greedy people or, you know, and, you know, when he feels like he feels powerfully, he feels strong. So when he's like, when you talk about the Catholic church, like so much heat comes into me. I am sure my face turns bright red. Like sometimes I break into a sweat and I feel like my insides are on fire because he's so angry. It's not that he hates the Catholic church and obviously he doesn't hate Catholics. He doesn't hate individuals, but he hates what the politicians of the Catholic Church have done in his name. Anything below love was not inspired by him. It was by their greed and their lust, and they stuck his name on it. And oh, that gets me so mad. So mad that I've even got rashes on my body after he has his impassioned conversations. Like, like red welts and blisters on me that like the next day are completely I'm like these were like third degree burns on my body and now they're gone you know so it's very different channeling the librarians and channeling Jesus and I love channeling like white shell woman and white buffalo woman because they're, I mean, they're my first friends. They were the first, they're the ones who taught me how to open and channel. And they're like so grounded and connected to nature magic. And they're also like so open, connected to the universes and the dimensions and the multitude of frequencies. And they're like so knowledgeable, but they're really mischievous and they love like just having a good time. They're just like, so like your favorite aunts ever, you know? And, um, you know, so 
it's like being an open channel takes a lot of constant self work because it means I become open to whatever frequency comes in. And that's, you know, it's like speaking 15 languages instead of speaking one or two. After a while, you know, I'm like, okay, who wants to come in now? And I've had some amazing, like those who have a message, they might come in just once or, you know, on rare occasion. And then they're like gone. I'm like, okay, I don't, I wouldn't even know how to get them back because I didn't, it's not my ability to claim any of these. Um, it's just the invitation is open and whoever wishes to come in and connect with me, it's my job to then align and open so that their frequency can become compatible with my presence. So, you know, the librarians are the most comfortable with it, but you guys have heard me channel um, Mary Magdalene, Mother Mary, Gaia, those three gals hang out together a lot. Um, Father Joseph, he's talked through me a few times. Um, some ancient gods have talked through me. I once got into a lot of trouble because I was at a mediumship circle and we're all, um, they, they, we, you know, we're all giving messages of like, generally people who passed and um, they wanted us to start channeling rather than like saying what was coming through, invite them to come through us and speak of their own. And, um, so people were putting questions out and whoever felt open, if someone would come in and speak through them, you know, they would share it. And some guys said, um, what was it? Something about why the ancient gods are so much superior to us. And at that point, Gaia jumped in me <laughs> and was talking about how the ancient gods are our older siblings. They're not superior to us, they're older and more experienced to us. So as and she gave this, it was so beautiful, it was so beautiful. And they were recording all our stuff. And of course, everyone else's recording was fine and my recording came through and we couldn't, like they were gonna give it to me and it was all garbled. Like, of course it didn't record at all. Um, and then I got in trouble, they said, Next time you channel someone, it should be a person who died, not the mother of all creation. You kind of screwed up the evening. <laughs> so, um, so sorry. That was a little bit of a just. No, that's funny. <laughs> no matter oh, where I go, God. I get into trouble. <laughs> <laughs> you bring Gaia with you? Come on. <laughs> yeah, they were not happy with that. <laughs> we would be like, okay. I was put on are. warning. I was put on warning with that mediumship circle. And I said, you just need to open up and invite anyone to come through. So I did. And they're like, yeah, that's not what we meant by that. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want, Marilyn Monroe? <laughs> Uh, they would have loved that, I'm sure. <laughs> but, but I'm, I'm well, I have like done mediumship like of people who have passed on occasion. For me, that takes a lot of work because I, it's not a frequency that I naturally yeah. groove in. A lot of people say that when that the famous people or relatives, you know, they're harder. Well, I mean, for me, anyone who died. I have to be, it's not common for me to talk with, with or see ghosts or spirits of people. Now, I can see people's past lives, which is the same thing. That's a frequency I'm good with. But so like looking at you all here on Zoom, if I space out, I can see whatever of your past lives are with you at this moment, no problem. But if there are any people who died, who are like, for whatever reason, haunting your room, I would not see them. So. 
we all have things that make us feel like we're incompetent. That's mine. <laughs> you already see enough people, Bonita, so <laughs> you can skip that part. <laughs> yeah. When I was out with Kim and we're in the graveyard, she, she sees people who died. And I was yeah. getting upset because I was looking at my equipment and it wasn't doing anything. And she said, yeah, because they're all over there up the hill. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, but, but, and I could see Kim's past lives. She had two past lives that were with her while we were doing that. No problem, no problem seeing them and chatting with them. And she was chatting with the dead people up the hill. We need to bring a camera person with us next time <laughs> because- I'll come. Great. Great, we will do that. 